How's it going everyone? Ben from Augment Guitars here and today we're continuing the eBay Telecaster build. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be routing out that Telecaster pickup, uh, bridge pickup with the humbucker. So we're going to be lining up the new bridge that we got, marking it all out. I'm going to show you how to use a template to route all that out and um, pretty much how to do the whole process. So let's dive in. So let's get to it. The first thing we need to do is take this bridge out of the packaging so that we can mount it to the body. We will be marking the outline of the bridge and the humbucker cutout so we can accurately place the template to do the humbucker route. For this bridge style, we need to take off the saddles to access the mounting screw holes. It's a good idea to keep the saddles, springs, and screws in the same order as you took them off as some of the screws and springs have different lengths. The current screw holes that were drilled are unfortunately not deep enough, so I found these two screws that will work for the temporary bridge mounting. Let's go ahead and mount this bridge. So now that the bridge is mounted, we can see what will be covered by the plate. Let's get the humbucker template and see how it lines up. It looks like it's going to be very close to the edges of the plate. Fortunately, it looks like it's going to fit and the plate will fully cover the cavity. I'm going to mark the outer and inner dimensions of the plate, which will help us line up this humbucker template correctly. And for good measure, we can mark the screw holes too. Now that we have everything marked out, let's take off the bridge plate. We can now see the full plate dimensions that we marked out with a pencil earlier. And we can also see the absolute edge that we need to be inside for the plate to fully cover the cavity. It looks like it's almost to the edge, but uh, we have some clearance, so that's a relief. After mapping it all out, the next step is to mount the template. I am using some 3M double stick tape which does a great job of holding down these templates. I accidentally used way too much tape for this template. You really don't need this much. Let's go ahead and position it and push it down to ensure that it stays put. Now if we zoom in a bit, you can see that some of the original Tele pickup route will still be visible. This doesn't really matter as it's going to be covered by the bridge plate anyways. We are going to route this cavity deeper to around a depth of 7 eighths of an inch. I like to make the cavities a little bit deeper to ensure all pickup types and brands will fit with no issues. The first step in the routing process is to take out the bulk of the wood. In this case, we need to take out some of the wood on the sides and lower the overall depth of the cavity using this half inch straight cut bit. When doing new cavity routes, you usually take out the bulk of the wood with Forstner bits as it helps reduce wear and tear on your expensive template bits. After taking out the corners, we will use a template ball bearing bit to perfectly cut out the humbugger shape. Let's start routing! For the straight cut bit, we will be routing as close to the template as we can get without touching it. If this straight cut bit touches the template, it'll cut in and ruin it. For these cuts, I usually like to go about a quarter inch deep per pass because it's safer and helps to reduce tear out and chips. Now that we are almost to the bottom, we need to adjust the router to cut at the final depth of 7 eighths of an inch. To do this, I am taking the thickness of the straight edge, adding the thickness of the template, and finally adding the final depth of 7 eighths to get the full extended cut depth. This measurement came out to be 1 and 3 30 seconds of an inch. With my calipers, I will zero them out and measure this depth using my straight edge ruler as a reference. Sometimes it can be kind of difficult to measure the depth just off the router base. 
When adjusting the depth or changing bits, always make sure to unplug the router for safety. Let's make that final depth cut. If you don't have a plunge router, just slowly lower the bit into the wood, keeping both hands on the router and your forearms stabilized on the body. Also ensure that the straight bit you are using has blades at the tip so it can plunge down into the wood. Now that the depth of the cavity is now routed out, we need to refine the edges of the humbucker cavity. To do this, we are using this Stumac 3 8 of an inch dual ball bearing template bit. This smaller size template bit works great for the small rounded corners of the humbucker. Let's start routing at the first quarter inch pass with this bit. As you can see, the ball bearings ride on the template wall, creating a perfect replica every time. After a few passes, you can see that it's finally taking shape. You can also see that I need some new temple bits because we're getting some pretty aggressive burning on the wood. These bits are very dull from frequent use, which is why I like to use the cheaper straight bits for bulk cuts. After making a few more passes, the temple bit couldn't safely reach any further, so I took off the humbucker template. Since we have the humbucker shape already cut out in around 3 quarter inches or so, we can use that previous cut as our template to finish off the remainder of the cavity. Let's finish this last cut. All right, we are back on the bench and let's see how we did. Look at that, it's perfect. The plate fully covers the cavity and you would never know that it was rerouted. Let's check to see if the depth will fit our silo humbucker. Once again, it's perfect, plenty of room. Another thing to note is that I did check the fit of the neck pickup and it fits perfect in the original cavity. The last little job I want to tackle in this episode is to drill out the string ferrule holes. To do this, I will be using my drill press with a 5 16 drill bit. I use some painter's tape as a depth stop to ensure all holes are to the correct depth. You can also use the depth stop on your drill press, but the painter's tape is super simple and easy to set up. Let's drill some holes. The original string holes were already drilled when I received the body, so all I had to do was open them up to the width and depth of the string ferrules. And it's easy as that. The holes aren't perfect, but I'm happy with the end result. A quick test fit shows that they are a little loose, but we can always add a small dab of CA glue to ensure they won't pop out. Just a small amount, as if we ever need to remove them, we can remove them with some light pressure. As you can see, one of the ferrules is different from the others, but I have the correct replacement in my parts bin. And that just about wraps up this video. Again, I want to thank everyone for your continued support and watching this series. If you like what you see, uh, give the video a like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. There's more videos coming. In the next episode, we're going to be sanding down uh, the neck and getting it ready for new inlays. So I'll see you next time.